And Sean, can you turn on captioning as well? Thank you. You're muted, but I understand that you said yes, you can do it. Yeah, I said I said yes, because my weather radio is under a pillow, but I can still hear it. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the uh, Chaos University Working Group. So this is a group kind of dedicated to taking a look at uh, uh, university open source program activities. Uh, so it's great to have you here, and it's great to have new faces here. So um, today, the minutes are in the chat. Today's question is if you ever fully step away from the internet during the day. Sleeping doesn't count. <laughs> so it's good to see yes. <laughs> it's maybe a it's a health question, probably. <laughs> so, all right. I will share my screen. Well, actually, um, so today we have uh Mike joining us from uh, GitHub. So uh I think Saeed, you had uh, invited Mike to talk about. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 uh, sort of the uh, instigator here. Uh, so yeah, Mike, thank you for joining us. Um, so what, what I thought uh, would be really uh, important is for Mike to talk a little bit about the GitHub Innov Innovation Graph that was launched a week ago, two weeks ago, uh, fairly recently. Uh, very impressive work. And so I think it's just good to know about it, you know, in general. But uh, I think it's also important to think about it in the context of the work that this group is doing. Uh, and Mike, I don't you know, know that you and I ever sort of chatted in person about it, but I saw Peter, uh, also some of Mike's colleague from GitHub at a meeting recently. And fundamentally what I'm you know, in essence worried about is unintended consequences, I, you know, I'll just put it that way. Um, so this great tool comes out, it's being used by a lot of people. What happens when people say, oh, look, those must be the metrics. Uh, that we use you know, for open source, whether GitHub intends that or not. Um, so that's why I put it in the unintended category. Um, but I think it'd be good if we could just, Mike, if you don't mind, just giving a little bit of an overview of it. Uh, and then maybe, you know, we can chat as a group about uh, that that topic and others uh, as well. Okay. Well, maybe I also have my colleague, Kevin, here, who's actually did 99% oh, cool. of the work. And it might make sense for him to do a quick... Uh, sure. screen share and of and course. walk through i can give some background maybe while he's getting set up because he's done a bunch of these demos um um and also want to give him credit because he did almost all the work um and um but but maybe i can start off with this kind of the while kevin's getting set up so the motivation here is really uh in some ways it's the flip side of your um of your concern saeed uh, we fundamentally observed that in kind of economic development indexes and things like that, that policymakers are targeting, software development wasn't being accounted for, things like patents obviously were, um, and if you know what's not counted doesn't, or what's not measured doesn't get actioned, whatever the cliche is that I've forgotten. Um, and we did some work over the last few years with the World Intellectual Property Organization, OECD and some others on getting GitHub data as a you know metric in their kind of composite development indices and thought it would make sense to um, um, open up some aggregate de GitHub data to make it easy for others to incorporate a lens into software development into that kind of yeah, uh, that kind of indicator that has policymaker attention, um, so that because we see and uh, the team that Kevin and I are on and Peter are on primarily working on public policy, and we see um, a lot of attention to open source, which is um, in part good. I mean, they're they're sort of people are seeing from the policymaker level that from the government level that you know, sustainability is an issue um, and that government needs to get more educated on open source. But on the bad side, there's, uh, um, you know, attempts to make software developers more liable when in fact manufacturers, vendors should be. 
and um, not having it, not not having um, data about software development makes it much harder to explain uh, explain how policymakers ought to be treating open source at the end of the day. So that's kind of the motivation. The the in the flip side of that is when you have a metric that's measured, of course, it's going to be there's an opportunity for gaming it, which is basically what you are getting at. I think the um, uh, this these are harder to game because they are aggregate kind of at the national level. Um, and so there's less individual motivation to game like there is with say stars on GitHub or whatever. Um, but it's still, you know, is something to keep an eye on. A and the, the other reason why we were not so worried about gaming is we kind of have built in motivation as a platform to remove spammy accounts and things like that. And those aren't counted in these metrics. So we're kind of fighting the gaming of GitHub overall and that kind of feeds into that, but still as you get into more, um, uh, more granular metrics, it does become more gameable and happy to, I, I'd, I'd be really, um, eager to hear concerns about that and how we might, um, account for those concerns. Anyway, to give you more flavor of what it actually is, I think Kevin can give you a quick walkthrough of what we got. Yeah, sure thing. Thanks, Mike. Um, so uh, we have uh, various metrics uh, that we would report on, um, these eight in particular. Um, so uh, yeah, as you would expect uh, in terms of like code uploads, software projects, uh, individual users, groups of users, uh, the the types of uh, code, I guess, uh, being, or I guess some, some characteristic about the repo to which code is being uploaded, whether it's program languages, uh, licenses, or the um, kind of user declared string uh, for uh, topic strings for repositories. Uh, economy collaborators is pretty interesting in that um, this uh, essentially is a data set that would allow you to uh, create these directed graphs between economies. Uh, as Mike mentioned, uh, we uh, have this categorized by economy, which generally corresponds to like country breakdowns um, and a uh, delightful kind of flipping uh, to combine the EU kind of member states. Um, <laughs> and we have it aggregated per quarter uh, starting from Q1 2020 uh, through a one quarter lag period. Um, uh, we will need to update this shortly. But, uh, <laughs> um, if, but I, if, I, if I'm looking at the, so this is, I think this is consistent with the impression that I got while I was going through it myself a few weeks ago. But I am curious, is is the intended scope always at this? This is obviously a very like platform level scope of information. Is that is that the intended full scope or is there a desire or ambition to move this integration innovation graph down to a more granular scope at some point? And, and no answer is right or wrong. I'm just trying to understand how I should position this in my mind, both right now and strategically. I think that's a fantastic question. And Mike and I probably need to chat further about <laughs> in terms of how granular we want to go. Um, I don't know if you have any initial thoughts you wanted to share, Mike. Yeah, we definitely would like, I mean, and Devin's being humble here. He's done a fair bit of work on, uh, you know, with some of our research partnerships, we would like to do like metro level or sub-national, um, but there's a lot of things to work out there um, from uh, privacy. We have some, basically any of these metrics, if you don't have more than a hundred developers doing an activity within a particular um, economy, then we don't show anything and it becomes much harder uh, to, to get that level of activity as you go um, subnational. There's it also, um, uh, also there, there becomes more issues with geolocations outside of the, uh, I don't remember the breakdown exactly, but many uh, non-wealthy countries, people just end up being geolocated in the middle of the country. Um, so it is harder to do the subnational breakdown um so it's something I, we would, would it's something we would really like to do um but there are a lot of issues to overcome that we're exploring yeah you you may this is just a sidebar on that the metropolitan level stuff you may or may not be aware that folks in cities uh, like columbia missouri which you know 130,000 people 
in the middle of the state, all of my IP addresses get cleared through one of the three major metros uh, in the state of Missouri, depending on the day. Um, and, and I only know that because I have YouTube TV. Yeah, there are all kinds of, when you start looking at that, you notice all kinds of anomalies. Uh, and one of the biggest ones is that uh, Ashburn, Virginia, seems to have an awful lot of activity. And of course, that's where the biggest concentration of, of data centers. Um, so all kinds of fun things when you get at that level. Thanks. That, uh, that helps me, it helps me a little bit. Um, a, a lot of the, a lot of the questions that we ask at, in the chaos project are centered on a sort of a project bounded domain of interest. So, uh, there, I think, of course, we're all curious about where our contributors come from, but when we're working on university projects, we're, we're usually scoping that by some set of projects that is of interest to us. And it, it doesn't, it sounds like this could be complementary to that scoping that we um, take as kind of our foundation, um, because it would, it would help us understand geographically where the most activity is, for example. I think that's right. It's um, this really the intent for innovation graph is to be about aggregate data in part for privacy reasons, and it's actually, uh, it, um, and it's actually challenging. We've already had requests to, you know, can you like give us a list of the most popular projects in a, India, for example, and that's actually pretty challenging because, well, statistically, we're pretty confident in kind of the distribution of developers, it would be kind of a, it requires curation to some extent to say, like, is this project actually originating from India because developers are moving, there might be, you know, more than one, uh, it becomes, more, I guess, more political. Um, and you have more surprises with individual, individual projects. So I think that overall, if you're doing more granular research that needs to identify individual projects or individual users. This really kind of just gives you maybe more intuition for the shape of activity happening on GitHub and maybe can like serve as an inspiration slash gut check as opposed to, um, and it might might help give you new research ideas. I think the things that, that really haven't been available before are kind of the country breakdowns. Um, and then on the languages and topics, actually, I don't know we've ever published anything on topics, but languages typically have only been kind of top 10, um, whereas now you can explore the top 50. Actually, there's a lot more than that in the in the data set. So those are things right. that that might help you hone in on, on research questions, but this data set isn't going to answer your questions about individual projects. Right. I, I'm laughing because uh, I saw JavaScript as the top ranked language, and I just told my computer science students yesterday that JavaScript is not a programming language. <laughs> this um, is another. This is another thing that comes up. I mean, you're, I think, saying that somewhat uh, facetious, facetiously, yeah, yeah. but yeah, but, yes. but this also, you know, people have seen programming languages next to repos for you know many years, but maybe not seeing a huge list like this, and they're like what exactly is a programming language? Um, this kind of highlights those questions. So they might be, you know, this new kind of visibility might result in the long term in us, you know, making changes in the way we classify and identify I, languages and things like that. I think so. I think all of these are reasonable, reasonably identified as programming languages. They're part of a repo. I'm, I was just uh, laughing at that. Is there a uh, I, I know that we can see the quarters in the in the other graph, and I was just curious if, like, I like this graph because I think it's showing me change over time. Mm, that's right. It, yeah. So I think, uh, like, for the geography, that would be cool to see something similar to this, just just to see how, and maybe maybe that does exist. Um, Right. Um, yeah. Uh, per economy, we also break down. The oh, nice. This is nice. Just, uh, for Algeria. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. That would that I think that would be really useful because many of us are working with uh, economic regions that are not, you know, I don't know, 
they have not historically contributed to open source at a high level, but uh, they're beginning. Maybe they, those some economies may be starting to, and so to see, you know, not that we could associate the impact with work that we're doing, but uh, to see that open source engagement is growing in particular regions, I think, would be helpful for many of us. That makes yeah, a lot that, of sense. That's, yeah, and that's that's really on target with what we want the impact of this to be. If, if you haven't seen in the in the blog post announcing this, there's a link to a a kind of white paper that we commissioned with a, a group in India called Tattle that kind of did an analysis of what kinds of um, through you know interviewing people uh, at the World Bank and other kind of development institutions, what kinds of metrics could be useful. And there's kind of a long analysis of of that that might be interesting to to skim through. Yeah, I will go. But I, I I admit I skimmed it, but I didn't in, internalize it. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of curious from like Stephanie or Saeed's perspective or Stephen's perspective or Claire's. Like for those of you that are in university open source program offices, like how what is this? How does this connect with how you're thinking inside of the university? What are, what are those points of connection for you? Well, I think in terms of the fact that that we're trying to get our hands around not just software development, but all kinds of scholarly product development, right? The the stuff about different locations, you know, different countries and, and what's coming out of where is like a nice starting point to work from, even though in the context of GitHub, it's clearly software forward. Um, it's, it, it helps the broader thinking, right? And it's good to know what we can tap on via GitHub, that then we can look for analogs in the non-software world. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll add, um, it, it, you know, one of the reasons that, you know, I asked Mike, and thank you, Kevin, for joining as well, um, to join was, you, you know, this is out, people are going to ask me questions about it. <laughs> Um, and I want to make sure that I respond in a way that is not inconsistent with what GitHub is saying, right? Uh, I don't speak for GitHub. I'm not, you know, promoting GitHub or anything like that. But I don't want to go around saying things and then have to say, well, I was at a presentation for GitHub and I said something completely different. So that's kind of the highest level reason, right, that I was born. But like this kind of view that I'm looking at right now, programming languages or, or multiple views that this tool now offers would be incredibly helpful in the university context, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if, if I could say to CMU, these are the programming languages that are being taught or not taught, sorry, that are being developed, you know, with CMU uh, GitHub repos, what does that mean in terms of, you know, what we're teaching, how the curriculum is being developed and so on? Are, are, we, are we surprised? Are we happy? Do we see areas where we want to focus and so on? I think that's where this tool is incredibly powerful, right? Um, you know, where, where I, you know, and I know Mike is, and, and Kevin are saying the same thing, where we don't want it to go suddenly is, oh, cool, I'm just going to put a bunch of Git pushes, you know, now so that I rise and, you know, individually I can say, look, I've, I've done more than someone else. Um, particularly because, you know, one thing, Mike, I, I should have mentioned is, you know, Stephen is actively involved and I'm somewhat involved and others are too in the Helios group, this higher education for leadership, higher education leadership initiative for scholarship which is looking at, you know, reappointment, promotion, tenure practices. So, we, you know, what I heard from them loud and clear was we don't want a citation impact factor to become the, the, the metric for software, right? So I think as long as we can say this is a tool that helps you get insights and ask questions, you know, that, that it's appropriately aimed at and not that it, this is the seed for how we should measure, you know, productivity, uh, output or RPT stuff. That that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, I, I I'll just yeah reiterate. I feel the same with what say was talking about too. And um, I mean, I think getting a good feel. I mean, I think that this showing kind of high level understanding um, also helps uh, with 
uh, what we show to like our leadership as well. Um, and kind of reinforces things that maybe we're already saying kind of gives like extra data. But, um, and I also do like the idea of the um, showing the, like the, we, you, the programming languages aspects and, and certain data where you're like, okay, these are the things that maybe we should be focusing on as a university uh, as well in the teaching, as well as in the other research and development they were doing. Yeah, and because Mike was was talking about you know, wanting to avoid this in the public policy space. That's why I dropped the um, the panel at All Things Open link into the chat. So whether Mike or someone else from GitHub wants to show up in the audience and chime in as part of that panel, um, expressing that point of view and that set of concerns would be helpful. Actually, we're, there's a, uh, I, I know about this, there's a, uh, conflicts that that the folks on my team at GitHub have, so we can't 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 come to this. But um, but um, I I'm very confident in the people who will be there, including you, Stephen. Actually, Deb Bryant has been very involved in many of the kind of ongoing um, things, particularly in the EU. We can speak to can speak to that. I, I just to I don't I don't want to avoid public policy. I just want to make sure because it's basically unavoidable now that. Open Correct. source is open source is systemically important, and so we just want to have it be you know approached in an informed, constructive way. Um, so, in fact, I don't know how many of you have seen the fact that the the Wilson Center and the Federation of American Scientists are now crowdsourcing public policy. Um, they have an effort to do that. Stuff's due like October twenty third. If you want, I can look for the link for that. I saw that I, I favorited a tweet about it yesterday, I believe. Uh, this is the uh, basically a call for ideas around open science, or if I remember correctly. You um, are remembering correctly. I'll drop it in there anyway. Ha. Yeah, uh, yeah. They beat me to it by one key click or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, 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 so I think you, you all have exactly the right impression that this is kind of an insights platform we we are eager to provide deeper insights that aren't purely based on aggregate data we are kind of bandwidth constrained that kevin is really mm -hmm. the only data person i have on my team but we do we we have done other collaborations so if this gives you ideas that would require um more data from GitHub, including that in many cases you can crawl it yourself, but but feel free to um, reach out and ask if you have if you have ideas that um, could require a deeper collaboration. And there's actually uh, maybe Kevin, you can show the insight report section of the um, of the. Um, these are all kinds of things that we've done in the done in the past, but we we hope to kind of build custom reports based on uh, future collaborations. Um, uh, and many of the people we've collaborated were at this NYU conference that Saeed saw Peter at, but um, feel free to reach out. Um, I guess we are very, I'm very interested in um, the open science side of things, I guess, including kind of the inputs, sort of open source being both an in input and an output of innovation processes. Um, and I also just to go back to an earlier comment, kind of from the university perspective, that's not something that this directly supports, obviously, and it's as I, I'm sure you all struggle with, it's hard to identify exactly what contributions are associated with a particular organization. Um, but we, we're also seeing internally kind of, uh, could we get the same kind of analysis for, you know, enterprise customer and that sort of thing. So um, uh, if, if any of, I, I'd be, so I'd be curious to see how, uh, how any of you or others at universities are, I take this as inspiration to give better 
uh, better metrics to to the university. I I have a couple of ideas. Um, the first one is uh, when you're pulling GitHub data. Of course, you know quite rightly in most cases that you don't get the email address. You'll get the GitHub login. What would be great on a contributor um, JSON record would be to have a flag. It indicates whether or not there is a .edu address associated with that account. Um, I have like 11 emails that I've used on GitHub. And, you know, if one of them is a .edu, good chances I'm doing work at a university. Um, and just having that flag would, I think, help some of the university and scientific projects know or be able to just bifurcate. This is, these are, this is the percentage of university contributors. This is the percentage of non-university contributors in a really useful way. I can't hear you, Mike. Yeah, sorry. That's that's really interesting. We have to think through the privacy implications yeah, of how to course, uh, how to course. actually do that. We are. This is not exactly the same thing. We are. We being really Kevin with some students from Berkeley are doing some um, work on classifying repos by um, their NAICS codes. There are. I'm not sure if I'm pr pronouncing the acronym right, but basically the industry an industry classification and uh it would be might might be an interesting thing to also try to and i actually don't know whether exactly how academia is whether it's even in that hierarchy but it but it's possible that we could do some kind of a classification of repo or some other um objects slash activity on GitHub in a way that would be, you know, informative of whether yeah, it was university-based. Yeah, even if it doesn't, if it is, I mean, obviously putting it on a contributor record makes it possible for us to produce that data inside the CAS project, but I think it would be useful even if it was something um, that was a percentage that didn't identify an individual as having a .edu or not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that would still be useful if it was incorporated into the innovation graph, like you're describing different industries. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll discuss that. <laughs> Good idea. So, uh, Mike and Kevin, I have a question for you. So, um, on the with the innovation graph and everything that you're showing, like. Over the years in chaos, we've learned that you know no metric or no display of data will solve any problem perfectly, but it helps move people forward in a very positive way towards the things they might be trying to answer with the data. Um, and so, like from your perspective, are there things that you're trying to present that that could help you think in a university context, kind of? provide insights, whether for researchers, for the institution itself, whatever it might be. And, or, or have you not thought about that, which is also fine. Um, and then if we could come up with like how, where the innovation graph and say the university institution could connect, like where those points of connection are to move things forward in whatever way positively, could that be a candidate for something like an insight report? I'm not sure. I'd say, How well, I mean, I'd say that, yes, definitely a candidate for an insight report. Um, we haven't really, I ha haven't really thought about it much for two reasons. One, we're really been kind of, we have three kind of audiences for this. I think policymakers, researchers, and developers, and the it, policymakers, because this is coming from the policy team at GitHub, is really kind of, our, and this is at a national level, has been our primary primary focus. The other reason is just that it is hard to square the circle or whatever. That the yeah, it. I mean, there are a lot of challenges from privacy to actually identifying who actually is associated with the university. So it's just a a big pro challenge that we haven't tackled with at at this point we would love to um uh, tackle it or help others tackle it and i 
love the idea of having a, you know, an inside report that did some kind of, uh, um, shed some light on, on that. I mean, you could, you could imagine an evil version of it that did like a university ranking of contributions to open source, or maybe yeah. I, I, I know that university rankings are, are have a very bad, um, reputation yeah. now. Um, well, if you, you produce know, any metric, we'll game it. Yeah. Right. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I but go actually. You know, I, I feel like it's a little bit unfair though that for years impact factors have been gamed, but also held in inappropriate high esteem. And now, when incorporating software into the mix, saying you can't do that. Um, anyway, I, 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 I yeah, think, I think that's yeah. a lessons learned kind of yeah. uh, situation, right? It, it's it's sort of become unstoppable at this point right decoupling that from the reward structure is incredibly difficult so there's just a desire to avoid you know that that happening again but you know mike one question i have it, it's not very well formed um so so if you need more context let me know so the, the privacy question um you know i've 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 thoroughly read the entire terms and conditions of GitHub, of course um, is is it more a privacy concern from GitHub side that you know you don't want to do that, or have you gotten some signals from the university community that we don't want you doing that? Because I I suspect there are probably a lot of researchers in university who be like, fine, yeah, I don't care if if you figure out it's me, yeah, that's fine. I definitely know we've heard zero concerns from the okay. university community yeah. on that. Um, it's more, I mean, there's like. It's a, you know, it's a combination of, I, I don't know, legal and reputational, more so the, more so the latter, because um, um, of course we, you know, within the law could ask for all kinds of things in our, in our toss, um, but we really, our, our kind of number one priority is maintaining trust with developers and um like revealing their locations when they haven't asked us to in a way that could in a way that could identify individuals is just something that we you know don't want to do unless unless it is um you know with a data sharing agreement with researchers that's not public um and we've you know that, that's ex that's exactly what i was thinking um, mm -hmm. is you you may be able to get a not, not all of CMU for example but right. is that will that will require legal and all sorts of people um but you may be able to get a small cohort right who are basically yeah. to say yeah we'll sign this agreement with you so we can figure out what is possible if, right. if that is disclosed so that's something you might want to you know think about yeah and there's always a over time thing. I mean, the, one of the other things I haven't mentioned that's we hope is interesting about that. It, this data set is long, longitudinal. And so hopefully that'll be useful for some, but the, the like wh who was employed or had a post or was a student at what institution when is first adds an additional difficulty when looking at contribution over time. And there's rich data sets out there you know, like even within the Microsoft family, LinkedIn, that, you know, potentially could could help with that, but it just makes it a, a thornier, more interesting problem, I suppose. Um, but we, it's, it's also super interesting to dig into. So very happy to have further conversations about that. So you, you know, you're, you're, in that category where I heard long ago when I gave a talk and people immediately launched into, why didn't you do this? And my advisor said, that's good. And that means they thought what you did was important and they launched, right? <laughs> you can improve it. So I hope you're taking it in that spirit because yeah. you know, it, it, it is really a great tool. We're just poking around the edges about how universities might benefit from, from it even more. Mike, I'd like to point out there's a comment or question comment in the chat from Angela, just about mapping research ecosystems. Yeah, I it would be fascinating. I mean, I would love to be able to do kind of the Kevin had put up the kind of trade sort of diagram showing flows between countries. It would be uh, super interesting to do that for 
universities. I know that people have done that for citations. Um, and I, um, yeah, so I, I would I would love to be able to do that. Or if you, if you have had other things in mind, would, would love to hear more concrete ideas about how, what you might like to see and what might be impactful there in terms of kind of mapping the, the ecosystem. Like I said, new here, sorry. <laughs> um, I'd love to think on it more with you. And I think it looks like the other OSPOs might as well. Um, it's usually important to universities to be able to talk about their industry impact, but also their research impact. So a map like this, which could be anonymized, mm -hmm. um, it would be fun to think about with you. Definitely. Yeah, and I don't know if this is where Angela, you were going. Um, there is a group that's been formed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> around the university OSPOs that um, have gotten slow funding. So maybe you and I can bring this up at the next meeting. Looking forward to it in December at CMU. Can't wait. Thank hey, you. Angela is joining us. If you haven't met Angela from the University of Texas, so it's great to have you here, Angela. Yes. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Are there other comments uh, or questions for Mike or Kevin while we have them on? This is really great. I think you've given us a lot to think about. Yes, Saeed. Matt, um, if you don't mind, maybe it'd be good just to show very quickly um, the framework we've been working on so that Mike and Kevin can see you know, yeah, how sure. we're coming at it. Yeah, yeah. If you have time. I Mike do. And Kevin. Oh, I, if Mike and Kevin have time. Well, I, you're, you're, suppo you're supposed to be here, Matt. I yeah. <laughs> no problem. All right. Um, okay, so... Actually, I've been working on it. This was going to be something I was going to talk a little bit about today, but we can bring this up next time. So... Um, so for Mike and Kevin, we've been trying to identify kind of a series of, of open source functions within the university. And those functions are really across the top. So research excellence being one of the functions that we care about in the university, research translation, education, and community work. Um, within each one of those, we would have a, a series of goals that we're trying to accomplish. And those goals are these boxes down below. So with respect to education, as an example, we're trying to identify a curriculum that uses open source. That would be a goal within the university. Um, and so like, obviously not all of these would map to what you were just talking about, but I think some may have some, some relationship here. If we were to, for example, if I was to take a look at research excellence and kind of go into the correlate um, open source activity with research funding. So that's kind of this box right here. The idea is, is we're trying to identify questions that would help help us aim towards that goal. So this is that comment earlier that not every metric can kind of address every goal perfectly. But in the chaos project, we often say we're just trying to move off zero because there are often goals and things we're trying to do. And we just have no, no insight into whatever that thing might be that we're trying to accomplish. And so only from there, kind of following this function and then goal question approach, do we have the metrics that help contribute to those particular questions that help contribute to the particular goal? So I think one of the things that, um, that would be really interesting for us as a group, say next time we meet, as, as just this working group is to start thinking about maybe what um, what you presented today, how that could necessarily support some of the particular questions we might have or that we might be able to answer with the data and how that could roll up into a particular goal and support a particular function. And like I said, not everything you showed today will fit perfectly into one of these cells, but there may be situations where the data that is provided um, through the work that you're doing can help address some of these questions and then ultimately achieve those goals. So, yeah, my, that all sounds great. My, my overall reaction is that probably you'll need more, 
yeah, the Innovation Graph as it currently is focused on aggregate data, probably is going to help answer many of those questions as a part, apart from kind of uh, providing some insight. I, but basically, they they probably require more project metadata, and I'm we are interested in I, or I'm GitHub to some extent. I personally am very interested in that. So I'll say, you know, very um, 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 there's kind of metadata that project maintainers add themselves and. That can include things like citation.cff files. Um, you'd be, and sometimes people will put in their README, this has been funded by XYZ NSF grants or whatever. Um, uh, and then there's also um, sort of external metadata. And one place that I think is kind of interesting that where people are working on that is Wikidata. Um, there's somebody named Daniel Miechen in particular that probably some of you know that's um, doing a lot of work on um, kind of using Wikidata as a platform to, um, you know, add basically assertions about, you know, things like funding. Um, and there might be ways to meld uh, Melbo's data sets. Um, I don't know. And then there's the whole idea of, you know, papers with code and things like that, that, um, um, and data set descriptions on, on GitHub that might be sources of input into some of these analyses. For sure. And it, one of the things when you were talking about the, the insight reports, I think is what they're called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And so, I mean, it might be useful, at least from our perspective, to think about, you know, kind of where the innovation graph could help just even by itself inform some of these goals that we have here. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think the insight report could even be something around that. Like this is, this data can help draw forward a positive discussion within a university around whatever. <laughs> <laughs> identifying research and social impact, for example, would be, yeah, right. and here's how we understand that to be a, a potential connection between this goal that we've established here and, and what is provided by by you all. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think, for example, if you know, economic development is a thing that U.S. universities are asked about a lot, we can show increases in open source in our state compared to other states. I think that would be that's something that could be pointed to without perhaps a direct causal relationship. Yeah, totally. And there, there's uh, uh, Frank Nagel uh, is one of the people who's been doing sort of related work uh, at the national level, basically uh, using a kind of a natural experiment, um, showing basically like more startup formation and other outcomes from more open source activity. Um, it would be wonderful to be able to do that at a more granular, granular level. So we're, we're super um, interested in that. Um, and I'll also say, you know, a, the kind of last column there around sustainability is something that we're also very interesting from a policy perspective or government has gotten more interested in things like the um, Sovereign Tech Fund in Germany. Um, everybody's trying to identify kind of critical projects um, that might need that might need funding um, and so that everybody doesn't end up funding curl I think it's important to get more more people collaborating on identifying those projects in some ways um, and I would I would love for, Policymakers thinking about this to also be thinking about again, kind of open source as an in input into the innovation process through university involvement in open source. So there might be something there that's kind of of interest to your community as well as to broader policy community. Um, that's that's really great to hear. So I, you know, maybe 
one of the things that we can do is, is start taking a look at what you provided today, not without without even suggesting any changes for, for you, Mike, or for you, Kevin, just what is what is currently there in front of us and how that might inform some of these some of these goals. And then subsequently, what I heard you saying too, Mike, that like as we kind of this framework that you see here is certainly not complete. We're this is something we've been working on, that it would be great if if we could continue to at least bring this framework to you on a, on a somewhat regular cadence. So you can kind of see how we're thinking inside of the university setting to just perhaps help inform your own work moving forward and thinking about how the, the data that you present and how you present it could, to your point, you know, help improve our understanding of say sustainability. So it, it might be a nice, uh, nice partnership in that regard. Okay, right on. Okay, uh, well, we are. We're, does anybody have any last comments, thoughts? I'd like to thank Saeed for kind of putting this together. I don't know. Thank, thank Mike, Mike and Kevin. And yeah. Mike and yes. Kevin for definitely thank joining you. us. Definitely. Thank you so much. This is absolutely amazing. Um, and it was really great for me. I've been, I've been hearing, you know, <laughs> hearing about this for kind of, like, I feel like for the last like three weeks or a month, you know, kind of the work that you're showing today. So it was really nice to have you come and, and talk through it to sites. I think one of his original points is like, where, where are you all coming from? Just so we can understand your approach and, and get the narrative uh, aligned between all of us. That's really great. Okay. Well, happy. I, I, I'll drop in a second, but very happy to join you. And, and I don't, I have connected fairly recently with um, Saeed, but I don't think I've chatted with you, Matt, or some others in some number of years. So good to, uh, yeah. good to connect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks again. And talk. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And we'll Bye. see you next time. Okay. That was really great. Bye. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. 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 You can all...